in the lineage of Doeg the Edomite. While David was running around trying to save himself from Saul, we are told in 1 Samuel chapter 21 that he came to Nob, where he met Ahimelech the priest. He requested for and received from Ahimelech bread and a weapon. Verse 7. Now a certain man of the servants of Saul was there that day, detained before the Lord, and his name was Doeg, an Edomite, the chiefest of the herdmen that belongs to Saul. The Good News translation says that Doeg was there because he had to fulfill a religious obligation, while the contemporary English version says he was there worshipping the Lord. Doeg saw what transpired between David and Ahimelech. Now, frustrated that he had not been able to get rid of David, Saul said to some of his officers, Listen, men of Benjamin, do you think that son of Jesse will give you fields and vineyards? He is not one of us, so don't think he will give you anything or make you officers over 1,000 or even 100 men. No, but all of you are plotting against me. None of you told me about my son Jonathan and the agreement he made with the son of Jesse. None of you cares enough about me to tell me that my own son Jonathan encouraged David to turn against me and attack me. And that is what David is doing now. Doeg the Edomite, who was present and heard Saul's words, informed Saul that he saw David at Nob when the latter went to Ahimelech the priest. He also told Saul of how Ahimelech prayed to the Lord for David and gave him some food and the sword of Goliath. Saul sent for Ahimelech and all the other priests that were in Nob. They all went to him. After accusing Ahimelech of an offense which he did not commit, which is conspiring with David against him, Saul asked his footmen to kill the priests. The footmen would not touch the priests of the Lord. The king then asked Doeg to kill the priests. Doeg, the man who was detained before the Lord, the man who went to worship the Lord, the man who went to fulfill a religious obligation, was the only one who had the courage to kill the priests of the Most High God, 85 men in all. There are many today who are in the lineage of Doeg the Edomite. They have accepted Jesus into their hearts and are therefore born again. They proclaim that they will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of their lives, and truly they are always in church to worship God, to fulfill different obligations to Him, and so on. They attend Sunday school, Sunday service, Bible study, prayer meetings, vigils, and other church services and programs. They are in practically every unit or department in their church. Some of them are even ordained by their churches and carry one title or the other. If their church authorities call for evangelism, they are likely to be the first to show up. If there is a need in their church, they want to be the instruments that God will use to meet it, or at least be among the instruments that He will use. Yet, these people never allow themselves to have a life-changing encounter with God. They never allow the word of God, which they hear all the time, to affect their lives. Therefore, they remain unbroken. They commit sin with unbelievable boldness. They live to their flesh and are always ready to do evil. Many of these children of Doeg have an unrighteous boldness, a wicked zeal which does not allow them to think twice before destroying the innocent. Among them, there are bold-faced liars. They can lie against God and man without any fear. Some of them even stand on God's altar and attribute to the Lord words that He never spoke to them. There are many church leaders who have no connection whatsoever with God. And just like Doeg was ready to do anything to be acceptable in the sight of Saul, the rebellious king whom God had rejected, so also today's Christians who are in the lineage of Doeg will practice wickedness to any level just to be in the good books of leaders whom God has given over to the probate mind. Note that for Doeg the Edomite to have heard and seen what he reported to Saul, he was positioned close enough to know from the, from the discussion between David and Ahimelech that the priest did not know that David was running away from Saul. He knew, therefore, that when Ahimelech gave provisions to David and inquired of God for him, he was not trying to empower Saul's enemy, but sincerely thought he was advancing Saul's cause by attending to David's needs. However, Doeg deliberately kept this information from Saul and mischievously told him just what was needed not to not only turn Saul against the priest, but also further fuel his anger and resentment towards David. In the same manner, Christians who are descendants of Doeg are full of deceit, mischief and wickedness. They are never peacemakers, but take pleasure in sowing seeds of discord among brethren. God is not deceived by how many times you are detained in his house every week. He is not deceived by how many departments you belong to or how much money you donate to his work. If you are one of the sons or daughters of Doeg the Edomites and have no intention of repenting because you seem to be profiting from your evil acts, 
Remember that the rejoicing of the wicked lasts only a short time, according to Job chapter 20, verse 5. Killing the prophets of the Lord may seem to carry no consequence, especially when you have the support of Saul, the reigning king. However, the table will someday be turned against you suddenly by the righteous judge, the king of all kings. May the Lord give us wisdom in Jesus' name. Amen.